Dr. Fizz, Spin and Antimatter. Theoretical physics here. Here's Paul Dirac on the left and his negative on the right to represent matter and antimatter. This Dirac equation, which we derived in the earlier section, is the free particle Dirac equation. It does not involve any potential energy, so it's a simplified form of the more general Dirac equation. And we're going to make it even simpler by having the particle be at rest. So the momentum is zero, and we have this nice relationship. And notice that this shows us that E equals mc squared, you know, the rest mass is m, and the energy for a particle at rest, according to relativity, is mc squared. Notice that spin and antimatter can be thought of as the two children that are born from the marriage of quantum mechanics and relativity. So relativity and quantum mechanics come together in a unified form in this marvelous equation of Dirac, the Dirac equation, and that marriage of relativity and quantum mechanics gives us two children, spin and antimatter, which you're about to see just now. So let's write this out in matrix form. Here the beta matrix is 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and the E is multiplying the identity matrix. So there's our matrix equation. We want to to find the eigenvalues, and when you have a matrix that's diagonalized, the eigenvalues are right there for you, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and the eigenvectors are simply going to be column vectors with 1 and 1 slot and zeros and everything else. Uh, we can check this out very easily if this is going to work. If you multiply this operator here with this matrix, the 1 will hit the 1, all the zeros will hit all this, and you'll have 1 in the top slot, and then when you have this uh, row here, hit this column, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0, you get 0. All these other cases have at least one zero in one of the slots that does the multiplication, so you get killed off, unless you're this first slot here. So when you multiply this matrix times this, you'll get the same thing back with a 1, and when you multiply the identity times uh, this uh, eigenstate, of course, you get the same thing back. So that says E equals mc squared for these two states. If you play the game with the second one, you know, when this uh, row hits this column, and you pair them off and multiply, there's always one zero in one of the two places, and you get zero. The only one that's going to survive, see, is that second one. That second one's going to hit this and give you that second one. This third one's going to hit here, get that third one, and this fourth one will get this fourth one. So these have eigenvalues plus one. These have eigenvalues negative one, and when you put in, you know, the uh, constants here, the eigenvalue for the energy for this one's mc squared, mc squared, minus mc squared, minus mc squared. So you can see that the particle solution split into two kind of particles, one particle with positive energy, one particle with negative energy, and the particle with positive energy has two conditions. Here it can, states it can be in. Spin up, spin down. See, these lower uh, components are dead. And over here for these other particle, which we'll call the antiparticle, the upper slots are dead, and you have spin up, spin down in the lower slots. So this represents the electron, the first uh, two eigenstates here, and the second two represents the anti-electron, the anti-particle, or the positron, not known in 1928, but discovered in 1932, a great triumph of theoretical physics to predict the existence of a particle that has the same mass as the electron, but it's a different particle. Now the negative energy is troublesome and has to be treated in a more advanced course in quantum mechanics, relativistic quantum mechanics, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to point out here we have two kinds of solutions in terms of the energy eigenvalues. Here is one pair of solutions and here is the other pair. So the first pair is your electron with two states, spin up, spin down, and the second pair represents your positron with two states, spin up, spin down. A triumph of theoretical physics. Here is where spin comes from, which you may have learned about in chemistry many, many uh, semesters ago in your introductory class or in high school, and this gives us where the spin, the two-valued nature of the electron comes from, spin up and spin down.